van. And I, 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 I'm expecting some people now. to feel quite ill now. Because the bread van was a Scots bakery bread van. <laughs> so if anybody's had any sun blessed in the last 20 Does years... Has anybody in Hyde who's had any sun blessed? God help you. There was no windows in the back. And every time we went down the corner, as Mick said, you just heard it was pitch black. We were bladdered. And you just heard... <laughs> oh, this spew running out of bars. OK, what's next? Oh, OK. Is anyone now, out the crowd it's... giving us uh, something like a what? Okay, so this is a this is a two-edged story. Uh, the first one is a great friend of ours uh, who used to go to Dark House, and he, his name was Peter Logan, and uh, he always called himself Logie, and uh, he had a pair of very bad grim boots, and he wore them one day for the match, and had some one, and he danced. So he and he, he he had like one of you know one of them. He had like the jeans, you know that the clutch was down here. And like the belt was you know, down here and his belly was over there and, and he was losing his hair and he was really conscious of it and he had a bit of a sticky out the ass and the belly, you know. So a really nice looking fella, Peter. He was a great no he was honestly. But he but he had these he had these dancing boots. And uh, you know, we used to have fantastic times. Well I'll come on to Peter in a minute. But we went to Wembley, 95. 95, And we used to always go down on a Friday and spend the weekend. By the way, Gaffer's not here because we went down this week on a Friday and we went to this hotel in Watford and we said let's have a bit of a laugh and we had a game of footy. Then we had a bit of a swim because they had a swim pool there and it was great. And Gaffer was standing there posing with his can and somebody nudged him and he fell in the pool and we all thought it was great the way he was acting that he was drowning. But he was drowning. And uh, yeah, he had to jump in and get him and we had to give him the kiss of life it was really frightening it's amazing given that kid couldn't swim either yeah hang on hang on so who's going to tell the story it was amazing after you jumped in me fucking butted me and knocked me out who's going to tell the story about logan's tip well, that is your uh, buddy shall i yeah? yeah yeah okay so we're playing man united as you know 95 and we were in the pub we were in this hotel and the bar staff said to us at like one o'clock in the afternoon on friday when we got there we just said the first thing what time does the bar shut and he said what time do you go to bed and we thought this is going to be a good weekend and as you know we're playing man united and everybody was saying we were going to get tonk because if you remember the story you know duncan ferguson was there uh, and canton he was all them stories about stuff and you know he wasn't fit duncan was there uh, wasn't so fit and everything yours, and, it, and right that was, and everybody thought man united were going to tonk us and we're all drinking all night and we said, look, the problem is if we get too bladdered and we get up dead late in the morning, we're in serious trouble because we won't. Logan could never find his ticket whenever we went to a match. It was one of these. You know when you got to the tennis stand, he'd go to every pocket and everything. And we said, Logan, lad, whatever you do, put your ticket safe. So we were all sharing, like there was two in a bedroom and we're all getting bladdered. And we said, let's have a tonk and we'll get up early in the morning. We'll have a swim to, you know, clean us up and uh, we'll have a good breakfast and about 11 o'clock we'll walk, you know, get a bus up to a train up to Wembley and we'll have a bit of a laugh, no problem. So Logan, he said, I know what I'll do. He got his tickets and dead clever, he said, what I'll do, so I know where they are, I'll stick them under the wardrobe while I'm sober. And then tomorrow morning, no problem, I know where I always put them because I put my money under the wardrobe in the house. I'll get me tickets, no problem. We had stayed up all night, we were drinking until about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. We said, let's go and have a bit of a sleep, and about 10 o'clock have a swim. And then, 11 o'clock, we'll get a tube from Watford right through. We'll be in a match, we'll have a great time, no problem. 11 o'clock, everybody ready, no problemo. Lo, where's your tickets? Under the wardrobe. Go and get them, no problem. It was a fitted wardrobe <laughs> in the hotel. And it wasn't an MFI, it was like Schreiber fitted. So we said, okay, don't make any noise because, you know, the man, because we were staying on a Saturday night, we don't want any bother. We're just moving a little bit. So we got like gangs were trying to move it. It wouldn't move. We had to go downstairs to the hotel. And we're all saying to him, Logan, you're driving us mad. We want to go to the match. We're going to leave you behind. He was saying, no. And we had to say to this, you know, the manager of the hotel, can you move the uh, wardrobe because his ticket's stuck there. Couldn't do it. He had to ring on a Saturday morning, just before we go on the cup final in Watford, which is usually closed. And he had to ring and find um, a joiner who'd come out. And the guy had to take all the screws out and dismantle the whole wardrobe to give Logan. 
is uh, is Wembley tickets. But we got there, and as you know, we won one nil, and it was a great day. <laughs> And don't be showing us where take it easy. Peter, who was our great friend, <laughs> the next year it was his 40th birthday. And uh, the sad thing is, we, you know, we don't, not all this gang here, we don't normally see each other in the week. You know, we don't even see each other, you know, uh, over the years at different times. We all work in different places. We'll never, no matter what, on a Saturday or on a Wednesday or whenever there's a footy, we're in the dark house. And Logue was the same, you know. We all used to go, we used to have a bevy. Logue used to drink Guinness, and I had his dancing boots on. But whenever there was a birthday party or a wedding, we'd all go. And when it was Logan's birthday, remember, Mick? Logan's birthday. It was his 40th birthday. Peter's birthday. Peter Logan, George. yeah. Yeah. And then, said, I've known him for 20 odd years. I can call him now. And then, the funny thing, I was going to Poland to do some work, believe it or not, and I was. I asked Theresa and David and a few of them in my car because we were taking some photographs for this project we were going to do in, in Poland and some film. And I ran out of petrol. Remember, Mark in Crosby and Tree? And I ran out of petrol. And, uh, you know, I said, oh, I've got to get petrol for the car. I saw Mark Logan go past me in his car. And he shouted, he beat me. He said, hey, you want to get a decent car? Do you want a lift? And I took me the last words from him. I said, I wouldn't take a lift off you, you crab. You know the way you shout with your mates, you know, just joke. The next morning, I got a phone call off Gaffer, who again can't make it tonight. And he said, uh, when did you last see Logan? I said, saw him last night. You know, just in the car, passing. Yeah. And he said, he's died. He's, uh, you know, he's only 40. He's only his birthday a few days. And it was a hell of a shock to us, to all of us, you know? And uh, as always, we, were, we, you know, we wanted to remember him. So we have a quiz every week. We do the Echo quiz every Saturday.